Japanese Grand Prix for me is lots of cameras, lots of people, and a moped to the track. Suzuka, 5.8 kilometres, 53 laps. In all, 308 kilometres. Four high-speed stretches, three slow turns, two ideal spots for overtaking, top speed, 313 kilometres an hour. Suzuka finally returns to the calendar after being away for, well, way too long. Suzuka is a fan favourite. It has become a classic in Formula 1. Just looking at the layout of this circuit, I mean, it, it makes me so nostalgic. It makes me excited. It is just purely a great track in every way. Now, I must say that maybe over the recent years where we have had these thick cars due to those regulations, the racing hasn't been exactly great. But over one lap, I think that this is one of the most satisfying and best racetracks in the world. Suzuka is 5.807 kilometers long. It is also a track where things happen. Now, I really want to reiterate that because there have been 12 occasions where drivers have been crowned world champion at the Japanese Grand Prix. Not only that, but Nico Rosberg in 2016 won the championship, of course, at Abu Dhabi in the last race. Nico himself said that after the Japanese Grand Prix, he really did feel like that, okay, I think I've got this championship. Michael Schumacher has six wins at Suzuka. Michael loved this track. He was, well, he is the king of Suzuka. The layout of this track is very interesting because I think that it offers kind of everything that you want to see in a circuit. Turn one looks extremely wide, right? Well, when you get to that turn, it quickly closes up on you, but that won't stop drivers from having a go. Getting a bit too close and making the slightest of contact can be the end of your race. It is also where we saw Ayrton Senna take out Alain Prost in 1990, that infamous incident which has gone down in Formula One history as one of the most insane moments the sport has ever seen. Not only that, but we have a wonderful and very satisfying S section here, which is extremely fun on the F1 game. This track is fun on any racing game, honestly. The Degna Curve has made for some iconic photos over the years of cars really leaning into that corner, showing what a Formula One car is capable of, really working that suspension, and some of the photos are just absolutely fantastic. And of course, 130R. How can I skip over 130R? I mean, it's impossible. 130R is one of the coolest corners in Formula 1, if you ask me. I guess it is similar to Turn 1 in the way that it does close very quickly, and you need some massive balls to make a move through there, like Alonso did when he was in his prime. Again, another iconic moment. The top shelf of Fernando Alonso's highlight reel would be that move through 130R on Michael Schumacher. Just absolutely insane. And we have the final chicane, which again, in 1989, we saw that infamous, iconic moment with Ayrton Senna and Alain Prost making contact and kind of going off. And then Ayrton Senna getting a push from the marshals, finishing the race, only to be disqualified. And well, it all kicked off from there. Suzuka for me is just very satisfying. It's very picturesque. I think it is a wonderful racetrack in every way. Now, the Japanese Grand Prix wasn't always held at Suzuka, but more on that in a second. Fuji Speedway did host Formula One in the 70s, of course, and 2007, 2008, the owners of Fuji and Suzuka, Toyota and Honda decided that they should alternate between the two circuits. But eventually Fuji said, we can't afford this anymore and we haven't been back since. So every year since 2009, Formula One has raced at Suzuka, except for of course, 2020 and 2021. Suzuka has been in Formula One since 1987. And until 1999, the Japanese Grand Prix was the only race in an Asian country until Malaysia came along in 1999, built the Sepang International Circuit, and the rest is history. So Japan is very important in Formula One. I think it's very iconic. I think it's very hard to find someone that doesn't like Suzuka. It is definitely a staple in Formula One, and I think if you were to ask a majority of F1 fans to design their dream calendar, Suzuka would be on there. A lot of people ask me, what race would I go to outside of Australia if I was to go international 
which race would I go to? Now, there are two at the top of my list. Now, the first one is Abu Dhabi, and that is simply because Melbourne is often the first race of the season. So I'd like to go to the first race and then the last race. I think that would be really cool to do. But I had a trip planned for Japan in 2020. We went to the travel agent. We had an itinerary printed out. All we had to do was go over it, see if there was anything we wanted to change, anything we wanted to add. We were happy with it and we were ready to book. We were going to time it perfectly so that I could attend the Japanese Grand Prix with my girlfriend. But unfortunately, something called COVID happened and I wasn't able to go. So for me, the Japanese Grand Prix is the top of my list. If I could choose one international race to go to, it would be at Suzuka. Also the name, Suzuka, it's just such a cool name for a racetrack. Well, I guess I should give you some predictions. Now I'm gonna go with a Max Verstappen P1. I think Max is going to wrap up the title in Japan and be crowned world champion. I think he'll become the 13th driver to be crowned champion at Suzuka. I think that is a great story, especially for Honda with them having their branding back on the car. And then for P2, I'm gonna go Lewis Hamilton. I think that Lewis really likes Suzuka. He has five wins. He is one behind Michael Schumacher at this particular racetrack. And then P3, I'm going to go Carlos Sainz. I think Carlos Sainz is going to have a big weekend. Some of these predictions might be a little bit bold, but we need to have some fun. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think of Suzuka? Do you love it? I'm sure you do. Feel free to follow me on Instagram for some behind the scenes content and future video sneak peeks. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload and you won't miss a thing. And with all that being said, thank you very much for watching.